Hi, we're trying some more examples of the double angle formulas for sine and cosine. We're going to try to find the sine and cosine of 4 pi over 3. And we're going to use all three cosine formulas and check that they agree. And we're also going to use our common values to find the sine and cosine of 4 pi over 3 to check our answers. So let me write down the double angle formulas that we're going to be using. We're going to use sine of 2x is equal to 2 sine x cosine x. These are probably worth remembering, but if you don't remember them, you can work them out from the addition formula and the subtract and the addition formula for sine and cosine. Cosine 2x is cosine squared x minus sine squared x. And of course, the x here would have to be 2 pi over 3 because what we're really trying to find is the sine and cosine of 4 pi over 3. So the sine of 4 pi over 3, according to our double angle formula, is equal to 2 times the sine of 2 pi over 3 times the cosine of 2 pi over 3. Now 2 pi over 3, that's a common value. I remember it's sine and cosine. Its sine is root 3 over 2. And its cosine is negative 1 half. It's negative because 2 pi over 3 is in the second quadrant, so its x-coordinate is negative. Remember, cosine is the x-coordinate. And so this simplifies down. A 2 will cancel. And so we'll get negative root 3 over 2. Cosine of 4 pi over 3 is cosine squared of 2 pi over 3 minus sine squared of 2 pi over 3. So I'll plug those common values in. The cosine of 2 pi over 3 is negative 1 half. And the sine of 2 pi over 3 is positive root 3 over 2. So I'll get 1 fourth. Negative goes away because it got squared. Minus root 3 squared is 3 fourths. And so I get negative 1 half. So that was the first of the three formulas for cosine of 2x. Let me remind you what the other two formulas are. Cosine of 2x is equal to 2 cosine squared x minus 1. And the other version we had of that formula is 1 minus 2 sine squared x. Those are all different formulas for cosine of 2x, and we'll try each one now. Um, so the first one there is cosine of 4 pi over 3 is equal to 2 cosine squared of 2 pi over 3 minus 1. So the cosine of 2 pi over 3 is negative 1 half, because it's in the second quadrant, minus 1. So that's 2 times 1 fourth minus 1, which is 1 half minus 1, which is negative 1 half. If we use the other version of the formula, we get cosine of 4 pi over 3 is 1 minus 2 sine squared of 2 pi over 3 which is 1 minus 2 times root 3 over 2 squared. 2 pi over 3 is a common value. I remember it's sine. So 1 minus 2 times root 3 squared is 3, 4 in the denominator. So 1 minus 3 halves. And again, we get negative 1 half. So that's very reassuring, because if you look at the three different formulas for cosine, we got the same answer for all three of them. So that was the first point we wanted to check. But now let's check using our common values. So there's 0 pi over 2, pi, 3 pi over 2, 2 pi. Now 4 pi over 3 is bigger than pi. It's down here. 
4 pi over 3 is, is sort of two-thirds the way around the unit circle to 2 pi. Um, that's one of our common triangles. That's the 30, 60, 90 triangle. And I know that the lengths of those sides there are root 3 over 2 and 1 half. And so I can figure out the sine and cosine from that. I just have to figure out whether they're positive or negative. Well, the cosine of 4 pi over 3 is negative because the x value is negative, so it's negative 1 half. And the sine of 4 pi over 3, also negative because the y value is also negative there, is negative root 3 over 2. So those are the answers we get using the common values on the unit circle. But if you look, that's also the answers we got using the double angle formula, uh, breaking 4 pi, up, 4 pi over 3 at up into 2 times 2 pi over 3, we got sine was negative root 3 over 2 and cosine was negative 1 half. So it did in fact agree with the values we got from the unit circle.